what's up everybody, my name is TrophyNut and welcome back to The Witcher 3 on the Death March difficulty. We're still playing the Blood and Wine DLC and we're looking for a Spotted White. In the previous episode we found out that a woman was scourged and turned into a Spotted White. Uh, and Whites being the creatures that were thought to be extinct, made extinct by uh, Witchers themselves. But uh, a woman was cursed and she turned into one. Now we uh, try to find a hiding place to await her return. Uh, I'm not really sure where we would be able... Inside of the closet, apparently. There we go. I wonder if she just won't be, won't be able to uh, smell us, because the other hags were able to smell us easily. She kind of looks like a hag. Wow. Okay, I take that back. They look worse than uh, hags. She's making some lovely soup, apparently. And she has spots, all right. Oh no, wait. Those are the spoons. She's covered in spoons as well. Uh oh. I think she noticed. Let's try and lift the curse. Here we go. Because we know it's a woman. The Bruxa didn't give us any choice, because we might have been able to uh, lift the curse of her as well. But she attacked us right away. But this one... might be fixable. I'm not gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. Wow, she's actually scared of us. <laughs> Does she want to attack us with that chair or what the... Okay. You tried to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. Okay. Here, a chair. Thanks. This is really cool. Yeah, sit down. Just need a bit for Regis. A white brew? Okay. And now we'll tend to you. <laughs> Look at that. Um. Hmm. The curse. Exact wording. Need to get this right. Words of the curse were, None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Okay, so... Let's swap spoons, because if I gave her my spoon, and that should... fix that, I suppose? Been searching for the right spoon for years, right? The curse is going to be tricky. The key to this one just might be that you can't eat with your own spoon. That's why we've swapped. <laughs> okay. Seems like she agrees. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that doesn't look great. Keep it inside, oh, girls. This isn't right. I miss something? Listen, gonna stand up real slow. Gotta search the house again. Sit tight, I'll be right back. Calm down. Oh shit. <coughs> yep. I fucked that up apparently. Or not. Okay. Let's follow the wife. Didn't work. Ate that vile stuff for nothing. <laughs> the brew for Regis at least. Can't do anything for white though. Except cut it down. Okay, we can't take it down. To kill the white in its own junk heap. God damn it. So we should have probably eaten that without the spoons. And uh, well, can't leave that thing here. 
Wow, that's a lot of spoons. Alright, it's probably a necrophage, so let's put on some necrophage oil. It's the red one, I think. Yeah, there we go. This is actually a pretty cool fight as well. Okay, so Igni seems to be doing fine here. Yeah, she's going down. What the? Oh shit! And there we go. I got stuck in the floor there for a second. Shit. Screwed up with the curse. We just will get what he wants though. There is that. Yeah. I totally misunderstood uh, that then, because I thought since the curse said no spoon you own will sate you, I thought it would have been enough to uh, switch the spoons around, but apparently that didn't. Monster stomach, and there's everything else, and the saliva gland, which is actually what we needed. And then we also have a disgusting white key, which apparently... Oh! That might, that's me just taking the trophy. Ooh, I'm just making this worse, huh? aren't I? Well then, sorry I couldn't fix that. Would have been good to do, but apparently not. So I wonder what the right option was there then. So there we go, that unlocked itself. Um, maybe we can find some nice loot in here. The meteorite axe. Oh, that's actually something I might be able to use. Dwarven whetstone. And then we're outside again. Well, too bad we couldn't lift the curse. Roach is right here, apparently. Oh, that's that door. Oh, funny. Okay, so I'm gonna head back to Regis, so I'll see you guys back there in a minute. So back at Mer uh cemetery. And uh, let's go talk to Regis. Whoa! Okay, whoa. Whoa? What happened? We heard some noises. Whoa, is that? Something happened. Regis, are you okay? What the hell is this? This looks fancy. I never actually looked around in here. Hello, old friend. friend. Hand will make for a nice broth. Hmm. You've clearly honed your sense of humor, but we are not cannibals, Geralt. I took a fragment of tissue from the hand. It will suffice to prepare some resonance. What did you do with the rest? I cremated it, as our codex commands. A raven told me you'd acquired the necessary ingredient. Indeed, we did. Pretty helpful creatures. Calling them often. I try not to overdo it. But they can be so useful, as they were now, when I merely needed to be sure I could arrive in time should things go sour. Managed fine alone, but thanks for the thought. Gonna need much longer to finish brewing resonance? Mentioned the last ingredient, too. What about that? That, I fear, might prove troublesome. You see, to use the concoction to summon the memories of one, the solution must contain the blood of another specimen of the same species. Shouldn't be a problem. I happen to know a higher vampire who should be willing to help. Right, Regis? It's not that simple, I'm afraid. While you were away, 
I tried my damnedest to identify a replacement, but, alas, none such exists. Not sure I understand what the problem is. Can't we just draw some of your blood? The blood must be in an agitated state. As I'm certain you know, higher vampires can change their corporeal shell. As our flesh changes, so does our blood's chemical composition. To make a long story short, I shall need to induce in myself a state of strong psychokinetic arousal. In brief, madness, rabidity. That doesn't sound that good. That stands to be very, very dangerous. Yes, indeed, for us. Dangerous? Why? I mean, you'll still be you, right? True. But I should be highly agitated, in a state of fury. You know better than I that fury cannot be controlled. If you've ever seen an enraged vampire, you know very well that all who find themselves nearby will be in grave danger. That's not that? a good idea, Regis. You lunge at me, claws extended. That makes two of us. But worry not. I've thought it through very thoroughly. Details to follow soon. To follow soon? Seriously, you're not going to tell us right now? Okay then, how do you plan to induce this state? Alright, so what do you want to do? We shall visit Tesham Mudna, an ancient vampire estate. There we will find cages suspended in the air. I will enter one, be confined. You will lure beasts there. Beasts you will then kill. The bloodletting should prove profuse. Abundant enough so that the blood scent will drive me mad. Wild. Okay then, tell me more. Tesham Mudna. What's it like? It is a place of torment. A torture chamber. Long ago, shortly after we'd arrived in this world, one among us named Kagmar developed such a taste and lust for human blood that in one night he could imbibe an entire village. This wow. brought trouble on the entire species. Yeah, Common folk indeed. wearied quickly of living in constant fear. They began to hunt us. Seek the aid of mages and witches in tracking us down. So what? Not like they could ever hope to kill you. But they were bothersome. Forgive the comparison, but when did you last enjoy mosquitoes buzzing around your head? In any case, the other vampires decided something had to be done. Kagmar had to be caught and punished. A torture chamber was thus outfitted in the dungeons of Tesham Mutna. Inside it, a cage made entirely of a special alloy of silver, dalvinite, and meteorite steel. Kagmar was captured and locked in the cage, sat there over two centuries, driven to fury time after time, never able to escape. Thus I know the cage will withstand the fury to which we shall drive my humble being. That was an interesting decision to make, so instead of being mad at the humans chasing them, they punished the one vampire that was responsible to agitating for agitating the humans. Huh. So vampires aren't all that bad after all, eh? So let's go. See no reason to dawdle. Tesham Mutna. Take me there. In a moment. Just one last thing. Yeah, because this is going to be dangerous. Okay. What's that one last thing? Okay, yeah, take a sip. What was that? Uh, blood. Oh, the last favor the raven did me. I've also taken some Sanguri. Oh. A solution that sharpens one's sense of smell. One drop of blood shall smell like a gallant to me now. You crazy? You're a recovering addict. Your outrage warms my heart, Geralt. But you must remain calm. I have no choice. Okay, this doesn't look good. As things stand, the die Calm is down. Cast. High time we set off for Tesh and Mutna. My head's spinning already and you're... You're starting to smell quite tasty. And you're starting to scare me. Yeah, that makes two of us. Tesham Mutna. Oh, we could see that. That's the the abandoned tower we could see from uh, Beauclair Palace. What is that? Is that a basilisk, fly basilisk flying around there? Okay. I must say, they have been doing quite a lot with uh, camera angles in this DLC. Much more than in the, the standard game and the uh, Hearts of Stone the DLC. The sacrificial chamber of torture and torment lies underground. Underground, of course. Sure. Sure you want to do this? Sure you know what you're doing. I can only hope I do. Please, let's go. The longer we delay, the less control I shall have of my faculties. I'd really prefer not to hurt you. Yeah, we prefer that too. So, uh, lead away. You lead. 
There is already a dead guy here for some reason. What happened to him? He looks like he's Scurvers been must be getting close to their disemboweled. Yeah, Correct. I told you there'd be danger. Well, there's a lot of blood for you here, Regis. Beyond this wall lies an ancient vampire dungeon. Seen a lot of things in my time. Nothing quite like this, though. My, I feel honored. A man with such a wealth of experience, yet I'm about to show him something new. Now, to open it. Apparently, just wave your hand at it. If you're a vampire, that is. Okay, then. Um... How the hell? It's an ancient form of protection against unwanted guests. The mechanism which releases the latch reacts only to a higher vampire's blood. Tricky mechanisms. A vampire hideout. Fortified, secured. Must have been important to your species once. Toussaint. It shall always be so. During the conjunction, the gate from our world to this one opened upon this land and no other. This was the first place we saw. Huh, interesting. So the vampires arrived at Toussaint at the conjunction of the spheres. Um, I wanted to say that I'm really sorry about what happened to the white, even so sorry that I'm gonna make an exception to what I've been doing before. I'm gonna reload my save just to be able to show you what happens if you do manage to cure the white. So, uh, here you go, guys. Okay, so we're back at the table and we are again faced with the decision to do something. So last time I swapped the spoons, but now I think the clue is then probably not to eat with spoons at all. So uh, let's eat, not using the spoons. And hopefully this works. No, no, put we the spoons away. Spoons. No, that won't work. You've been looking for a spoon that would feed you, but there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons. So just uh, gobble up the soup. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, it dropped on the floor. Look at that. She's uh, she's confused about that as well. She's mimicking him, mimicking his every move. Oh, uh, yeah. That that's not good. Keep it inside, Geralt. You need to see your likeness. Come on. Oh yeah, it's working. Yes, okay. Ooh, and Garrel doesn't look good as well. Oh. She again is running towards her stash. Wow. My toxicity levels are uh, pretty high. It's not as high as it should have been, but... Just not quite like I expected. Need to see what happened to the white. Yes, indeed. To find that stench. So let's follow her again. She's going back up. So did we do it? Did she uh, turn back? She went outside even. Hello. Yeah, she's over there. Near the fountain. Where the... Okay, she dipped in the fountain and then... Kept running. Oh, hi. Ghost dog. So now my sword broke again, of course. Because uh, I didn't repair it now. So let's do that quickly. There we go. All fixed. And let's try and find her again. Wow, she went far. Where did she go? She's probably naked as well, but... Oh, he's in the wall. Wow, <laughs> these guys can breathe fire. Whew. Thank you. So let's follow the scent further. Is that her? Yes, it is. Marlene. She looks dressed. Easy, not gonna hurt you. Well, she's actually an old woman right now. Eat. I must eat. Hello, Marlene. Mm. 
That was interesting. Oh! I'll take you someplace safe. She's too weak to walk. Where are we going? Eau Claire at night. Lovely view. So I took her by the hand and let her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. Oh, we're back at Corvo Bianco. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. The vineyard that we got. I'm deeply pleased, finally, to make your acquaintance, sir. Though I oh. do regret the specific circumstances. In all the commotion, I fear I neglected to introduce myself. I'm Barnabas Basil Fawlty. Basil Fawlty, seriously? From Fawlty Towers? Nice to meet you, Barnabas Basil. Love to talk more, but got urgent matters to attend to. While I'm gone, please make sure she gets everything she needs. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? A curse. Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She Marlena. was once the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar well, then broke his spoon. Bit her in the ass. Curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again, since she adored feasts. He swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. It was actually... Let me tell you the story. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what and so she killed them every time. To sit down and share a meal with her, of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. So for those of you that don't know why I was laughing at his name, uh, you might know Faulty Towers, uh, an, an, a bit of an older English comedy series that revolved about around a, a little hotel that was owned by a guy named uh, Basil Faulty, played by John Cleese. And, well, that's kind of what his name is referring to. And it's a pretty funny side note there. So, this place, tell me more about it. Vineyard now that we're here at the vineyard. With a rich history. Know who owned it before me? Baron Rossell, who went bankrupt forcing him to sell the estate to the Duchess. The Baron, in turn, had purchased it from Monsieur Bolius of the Headsman, a truly colorful man of Ketweni origin. He was actually a Headsman? No, not him, but his great-great-great-great-grandfather. Indeed. Apparently, Four he was a common cut purse who somehow secured for himself the post of Ducal Headsman in Beauclair went about his work with an exceptional penchant. They say he chopped off more heads than there are grapevines in the ducal vineyards. He and that's saying something, probably. Once, never sliced unevenly, never botched a job. For his exemplary service, the duke granted him a title and this estate. Monsieur Bolius, on the other hand, was an engineer in his younger years. Once retired, he settled here and took to producing wine. Sadly, which one does that? Uh, lost his sense vineyard. first of smell, then of taste. Additionally, he could not drink alcohol. His medic forbade it. Shame that irony. He gave up making wine. Not at all. He made even more of it. Began throwing wild balls to which he'd invite friends from far and wide, in order to treat them to his wine 
and delight in the fact that at least someone could enjoy it. Hmm. It's the sort Sounds of like man a good he man. was, Monsieur Bolius. And, um, hmm. Show me around then? Mind giving me a little tour? Since this is Bianco, mine now. Least. Follow me, please. I think it would be practical to begin on the hill. Sounds good. So I'm gonna return in a second back Behold, to Reaches, sir, but uh, I wanna see what happens right here. It's splendor. Wow. This is a Pretty vast. very nice place. Indeed. And now, sir, allow me to show you a handful of interesting details. Follow me, please. Okay, lead the way. No place like home. Let's follow that first. Life? Yes, I come from a long line of major domos. My father was a major domo, as was my grandfather before him, as was my great aunt. In fact, she was the one to start the tradition. Great aunt? A hard woman. It is said that already as a child, she knew where she was going and went there. When she arrived in Beauclair, she signed on as a chambermaid at one of the vineyards, then slowly worked her way up to Major Domo. She dragged the rest of the family up the same path. I would have preferred <laughs> there being a Basil Fawlty above his head instead of Major Domo, the but... The servants' quarters. I occupy the green home. With the Duchess's permission, I have hired a full staff. Their salaries to be paid from the ducal treasury. Oh, nice that's effort. handy. Not the most sightly part of the estate, I admit. But I think it's worthwhile for you as master of the domain to know where the help stays. Of course it is. And especially since the staff is for free. Which is uh, very handy indeed. That we don't lose uh, a couple of crowns every day. Vines in this part of the estate uprooted and olive groves planted in their place. They look beautiful, especially come spring. Don't look at all bad now either. Yes, indeed. Well, this this entire place looks amazing, but down below lies your vineyard, where we grow a strain of Carfanere, one of the world's oldest, aged in oak barrels. It provides for an exquisite wine with distinct blackberry, wild cherry, plum, and cinnamon notes. Marvelous. I have to try it one of these days. Yes, indeed. Oh, but, oh, look at that. A peacock. Goodbye, my peacock. There's more. Uh, where is he? Oh, there he is. Nice well. Picturesque. Yes, though it ran dry long ago. During the raucous feasts Master Bolius held, he would order it filled with wine. There's a tale Sounds of expensive. Guests attending a Bolius spoon for the first time and thus unaware of the custom. He had suffered great heartbreak and had decided to end his life by jumping into the well. The festivities were coming to a close. And the well was nearly empty when the suicidal guest finally jumped. Instead of killing himself, he merely broke his legs. To numb the pain, he drank the wine. Drank himself <laughs> to death? N not at all. When found the next day, he had concluded he'd witnessed twin miracles. The water had been changed into wine, and he had survived. He retired to a monastery in the Dragon Mountains and began preaching the wisdoms of Lebioda. Man, I'm, I'm having trouble looking at it all because it's so beautiful. This place is amazing. And it's all mine! Monsieur Bolius's wife Nina kept a garden here. <gasps> a supremely lovely place it was. Bit neglected now. I agree. Yet nothing stands in the way of restoring it to its former glory and once again planting it with herbs and other vegetation. I'm starting to feel like we're going to have something to spend their money on. Because I've seen a few things that aren't really... Well, that could Madame use some tending to. diminutive, delicate flowers and herbs here. One might say their aroma still hangs in the air. You're quite the romantic, Barnabas Basil. Yes, indeed. So we can add probably a lot more flowers to this place. And uh, you're gonna show me my house now? Where I can... Ooh, I'm gonna assume that's it. 
over there on the right. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop for me. Oh, do we have a dog? I want to pet the dog. Can I pet the dog? No. Come here, doggy. No, okay, never mind. Roach is al already uh, enjoying himself as well. An additional wine cellar in years of plentiful harvests. Hmm. Bit of work, and it'll make a fine stable for Roach. Sounds like a plan. That's definitely something I'm going to spend uh, my money in. And that's the basement where the tens of guards Smola? were killed. During Monsieur Bolis's time, wine was kept here, but Baron Rossell used it to store olive oil as well. I took the liberty of cleaning up the uh, mess, which I made while fighting the Bruxa. Thanks, Barnabas Basil. Appreciate it. Yeah. Much appreciated. Okay. Next up, probably the house then. Lead away, lead away. Don't let me hold you up. I can't walk any faster, by the way, if you're wondering, because you uh, the, the game prohibits is, me from. How to put it, slightly stained. Yes, but indeed. Not deny it, a certain subtle southern charm. True, though it could use a bit of subtle paint. Okay, is that it? Is that the entirety of the quest, or are you going to show me the inside of the well? It looks like he is. Yeah, smack the door open. And welcome inside. Wow. On the left is the master bedroom. On the right, the dining hall and kitchen. Upstairs, you shall find the guest room, currently used for storage. Not a bad idea. At the moment, the house is only minimally furnished. Yet I believe we will, together, devise some innovative arrangements. A few paintings, for instance, would breathe new life into the abode immediately. With that, okay. sir, you've seen the full lay of the land. Corfo Bianco is a beautiful estate. Though one must admit, time has taken its toll. If, if, forgive me for being forward, but if you were to choose to invest a small sum towards its beautification, consider me at your service on the matter. Think I'll take you up on that. Be sure to come and see you if I decide to do any remodeling. Yes, indeed. Uh, I think we could do some renovating. Yes, indeed, we should. I'm sure the place could stand to be spruced up. Almost decidedly, sir. The question is where you would like to begin this rejuvenation. Stables. Stables. Um, let's do some work on the house or the grounds. Let's start with Got the grounds. Got spacious grounds. Hmm, but maybe it's time to make them more uh, useful. Oh, yes. We certainly should. The way I see things, given your trade, sir, you would be wise to put in a grindstone and an armorer's table. A good way to start things off, don't you think? Yes, I think indeed. So... Yeah, okay. I'm gonna My buy armor both. needs work from time to time. You know, oil this, reinforce that. Could use a decent work table where I could do all that. Admiral Rompali once hired a specialist who made the finest armorer's tables this side of the Yeruga. I will contact him at once. Okay. Order the table. Thousand. Good. Order me up a table like that. Immediately, sir. I expect it will take at most one day to arrive. Okay. Will you be needing anything else, sir? Well, you can add the, ground, the grindstone as well. In my trade, my blades get dull pretty quick. Could use a grindstone. Professional grade. Of course. No one would consider that an unnecessary extravagance, I would wager. Yes, indeed. Order it. Then send out for one, please. We still have plenty I'll of money. stone to be set up in the yard. Of course. I shall send a runner to town at once. I believe you shall be grinding to your heart's content by tomorrow. So, okay. Will you be needing anything else, sir? Um... Well, let's do some work on the house, I'm then. I'm thinking about the outer walls. Maybe a fresh coat of paint, or some patching. If I might dare to make a suggestion, why not start with a general renovation? I once oversaw such work at Admiral Rompelli's summer residence. The effects were simply breathtaking. Not only did the residence positively sparkle afterwards, but we also made room to display the Admiral's armor and weapons, of which he was a passionate collector. That sounds amazing. So yeah, I'm gladly going to give you 5,000 coins for that. It's in your hands, then. Because so Make we can show shine. all of the Witcher gear we've made so far. to work immediately. 
Within a day's passing, I shall have sent for the crew which rebuffed the Admiral's residence. They are the finest specialists around. Highly skilled at what they do, it shall not take them too long, I wager. Two days after they begin, your eyes will behold your residence in its refurbished, rejuvenated, beautified state. So in three days, everything should be done Is there then. Anything, anything else you require, sir? Um, can we do anything else? Because the grounds, there were Starting other things. Starting to get into this whole renovating thing. There must be other things we can improve. I agree. Yet I would urge you to hold off on further construction until the ongoing work is done. Juggling can be a challenging art. Ah, it's best okay. not to undertake too much at once. So we need to wait. Um, so, I'll uh, leave you Thanks. at that. Gotta get back to my business mm -hmm. now. Basil. See you soon. Okay, so uh, after that is done, I'm gonna now head back to uh, Regis and continue the storyline as we've put it so far. So see you guys in a second, back at where we left it off. So, there we go, we're back at where we uh, ended up last time. Um, if you're wondering, I didn't go back to that old save, I continued to one where we actually turned the white to back to a normal woman, and we spruced up the Corvo Bianco. So, uh, now we'll continue. But I'm first gonna take a little break since that cost me a lot of time to do all that because the the Corvo Bianco upgrades uh, well that changed a lot in my uh, planning so I'm gonna take a little break so thank you guys enormously for watching if you enjoyed the episode don't forget to like it right here and uh, if you don't if you haven't yet don't forget to give it a thought to subscribe to my channel because I really appreciate any support you guys can give me and in the next episode we'll try to uh, find out where that laugh is so see you guys next time goodbye